course I'll get to them. How's it going? It is Charles Botenston from BPI. Welcome to the August market update. We have uh, a lot of news to go over. We have not only a lot of numbers, we haven't been uh, giving the market updates because it's not been the ideal scenario for a lot of listing. Uh, not only a lot of listings, but a lot of owners and getting the right price. So essentially, we just wanted to give you some uh, updated numbers, not only the updated numbers, but just there's uh, a couple of people that we always reach out to. So you have for sell by owners. Those are owners that are looking to sell on their own. And then you have expires. Expires are essentially owners that listed with a broker, but have come off the market for various reasons, whether they couldn't find a price that they wanted, they decided not to sell, they decided to rent it out, whatever the case is, but there has been an inverse relationship. So before I get into Manhattan, Brooklyn, and Queens, we're gonna go over those, and essentially the amount of owners that are willing to sell on their own, it's all psychology. So the amount of owners that are willing to sell on their own has decreased significantly. We just started tracking the numbers. We're gonna come out with those numbers in the future. We're gonna make sure that you guys are updated on that so you're gonna be able to see the graph. But essentially since 2008, the amount of owners selling on their own has gone down and the amount of expireds, again, those are, peop those are owners that listed with an agent and did not sell with that agent. The amount of expireds has been dramatic. Case in point, today we had 32 homes come off the market, okay? Consistently, every single day, there is between 25 and 30 homes coming off the market every single day. That's, that's a lot, okay? So essentially, let's just go over that really quick, why that's actually happening. And then we'll go over the exact numbers for all those people that care about statistics and math, which was of course my strong suit. But essentially, psychology wise, I, I actually noticed the week that the market slowed down in 2008. So it's spring 2008 and it was literally a cliff where the amount of people that were coming to our open houses just went from 10 to four. And then it just stayed at that number. And, and I just started listening around and hearing that the pulse was pretty much consistent throughout the market. But this is the thing is that owners receive information about 45 to 60 days later, and then they prepare for sale maybe another 15 to 30 days after that. So they are about 90 days behind the marketplace. And the reason being is that by the time numbers are compiled, and then they're sent out and they're written up and people like myself and other brokers give out the market updates. They're already about a month behind because it takes a month to accumulate all of these numbers and actually put it together and piece it together and then get it out to you. For us, it is literally week to week. One week, amazing amount of people. Last weekend, nobody had open houses and that is the pulse throughout the marketplace, okay? So this is the realistic numbers, okay? So essentially what happened was all these owners got bullish last year. They were seeing their neighbors sell it at ridiculous pricing. They saw that 10G sold at $5 million and they're in 9G, same layout. And they said, I'm going to get the same pricing. So by the time they got ready, all these other owners started saying, actually, I'm going to sell as well. And then there was a massive amount of inventory that just flooded the marketplace last summer and last fall. And it was an awful time to sell. And it was not a good time to be a homeowner because you were thinking you were going to get a price. And then you noticed that all of the down arrows started this spring of saying, we're actually lower than what we wanted. We're lower than what we wanted. We're lower than what we wanted. And then it kept on going down. Okay, so that essentially explains why so many homes are coming off the market. There are only three options to do right now, okay? Number one is you actually meet the buyer, which unfortunately, or fortunately, is they're serious and they're qualified. So any person that comes to your house, to your open house, to your showing, second showing, God forbid there's a third showing, anytime they are serious and they're qualified, they matter. Okay, so your broker and us, we take every single showing very seriously because, very seriously, if that's English, very serious. So if someone comes for a show, and this is the reason being, okay, because if you have a home for sale and you're a buyer and that buyer, say I'm a buyer, I'm, 
I'm only gonna go see homes in this market if I'm qualified and if I'm serious. And the reason being is that all the people, I don't know if Facebook just stopped, but um, if there was anyone that was not serious or if there was anyone that was not qualified, they've already left the market. They've, they're, they're gone, okay? They, and the reason being is that they got discouraged. They got flooded with inventory. Another new listing isn't exciting them anymore because they're receiving five or six every single day. All right, so every showing counts, every showing matters, okay? And then if you're an owner, only three things are happening right now. Number one, you are lowering the price, unfortunately, to a number you probably don't wanna sell at, okay? That's the reality. That's the new reality we are in. And that's the, that, listen, there's, there's, trust me, we've turned down a lot of owners that we said, we, we can't sell it at that price, so we're not gonna take the listing. We'll take it the second time around when another broker says, yeah, I'll sell it at that price, when they actually can't sell it at that price. So they're actually giving unrealistic expectations and they're actually pretty much lying to the owner that they can sell it at a certain price when they can't really sell it at that price. Very unfortunate. And it sort of bothers me, as you can tell, that a broker is willing to give these unrealistic expectations on a price that they can't even obtain. So you're kicking an owner out every single Sunday to do your open house or showings, and then when they ask for feedback, there's no feedback, it's, it's bad overall. So number one is you have to meet the buyers in the marketplace. The buyers need to see your home as valuable. I cannot stress that professional property tours are the way to go. Number two, you rent it out. This is the most feasible option for a lot of owners, and it's pretty much probably about what 30% of the owners are doing. 30% are taking it off the market, probably about 40% are taking it off the market, and they're like, listen, I don't need to sell, I don't wanna sell, we're just gonna say, stay. The other ones are renting it out, and then the other percent is just saying, hey, listen, you know what, we're gonna sell in the future, but it's probably gonna be in the fall, it's probably gonna be next spring, and we just want all of these other homes that are available for all these buyers, they're just, they're just gonna have to you know, go away. Okay, so you sell it at a price that you may not want to pay, may want, may not want to sell at. You rent it out, or you just stay there and then you sell it at a later time. So let's go over the numbers really quick. Number one is Manhattan. Okay, so the sales price is still down year over year, four percent. That's no surprise here because last summer it was down, but it was still higher than the year before. So it's down four percent. The amount of new homes is seven percent, so seven percent more, and that number. All these numbers are actually beneficial to owners, okay? So the market is stabilizing. It's not stabilized. If you are a buyer, there is definitely opportunities out there. I cannot stress that enough. You have to go in with a broker that's willing to give you a bold ask or a bold price and be able to fight on your behalf. Otherwise, you're gonna overpay. All right? It's not about the sales price. It's about the buying price. That's where all the profit is made. You know, it wasn't me. It was all the smart investors that said that with the stock market. It's what you pay. It's not what you sell it at. Because if you pay it a low number, because you fought for that number, and you don't over-renovate, you will make a profit at any time in real estate, so long as you do it correctly. Days on the market, slight decrease, still 75 days, still a decent amount of time. That's, uh, you know, two and a half months right there. Brooklyn. Brooklyn still has a flat increase. It was like 0.2% on the pricing. So Brooklyn, out of all of the boroughs, is probably the most stable. Queens is the most volatile. Manhattan has been decreasing. And obviously, on the high-end marketplace, you, you're having so much come on the market when it comes to all the towers that are just north of me, obviously Hudson Yards, uh, all over the place there's new developments. New developments are actually going towards the rental sides. It's very 2009-esque in the financial district when you know 30 buildings came online with hundreds of units, thousands of units, and then the developers were like, well, we can't go condo, so we're gonna go rental. So Brooklyn, days on the marketplace, 59 days. So just under two months, which is amazing. So if you're a Brooklyn homeowner, it's still stable, which is great. Queens, price has still gone, has still increased 2%, not as much as it has in the previous months. And the reason being, there has been so much inventory. Literally, the last amount of inventory year over year has been 20% for the last couple of months. This one, it's 15%. 
So the amount of inventory that is entering the marketplace, again, it's, it's Econ 101, it's supply and demand dynamics, that's just the ratio, you, you, it's just facts. If you have too much supply and there's not enough demand, the price is gonna go down, okay? I wasn't an econ major, but everybody knows that. Days on the market, 58 days. So if you're looking at Queens and you're saying, okay, the sales price went up, the amount of homes that entered the marketplace was pretty high at 15% more than last year, and the days on the market is 58 days. So that's the least amount of days with the highest sales price. Just go to Long Island City. Okay, just go to Astoria, okay? If you go there, or if you just take the, the Long Island Railroad and you look north and you see all the new developments, that's adding to the sales price. That's adding to the amount of new inventory, okay? So if you're looking at this holistically and you're not looking at the numbers and you're following, say, Fox Business or MSNBC or CNN, CNBC or whatever the heck that, whatever, in other words, they're not in the weeds. They're not doing this day to day, okay? When you see less for sale by owners, when you're seeing more expireds, and you're seeing the pricing stabilize, yes, Manhattan is still down 4% from last year. Yes, Brooklyn is still flat when it comes to sales price. In Queens is up 2%, you think it's a bad market. But the thing is, we don't know when it's gonna change unless it's behind us. All right, so if you're a buyer, you have to go in with a professional. Yes, still a buyer's market, that's clear, okay? We're also gonna be coming out with a list. We probably have, ooh, 30 off-market properties. You know, I just got off the home, uh, just got off the home, just, just got off the phone with another home that came off the market. The feedback was that the entryway needed to be changed and the cabinetry was just a little too specific to the owner. So he's gonna go a little bit more bland. It was listed with someone else. We called him, we said, hey, listen, I know you listed with someone else. We lost the listing, but we understand that the person two, two floors above you sold, right around one three, and the person right below you actually sold still above you, okay? So it's really not the market, it's really not the building. It's really how it's either marketed or shown, or if the feedback is the entryway in the kitchen, you gotta take the feedback. So if you guys have any questions, leave in the comments below, I hope this helps. We're gonna be coming out with a lot more, not only Manhattan, Brooklyn, and Queens, we're gonna be coming out with the expired and the for sale by owner numbers, and the reason being is that we reach out to them every single day. And essentially, the reason we do that is those are real live customers. If you're a buyer and you want an off-market opportunity, we have a collection of those. If you are a seller and you wanna add your home to that, just shoot us a call uh, or an email, whatever is easiest for you guys, all right? Or just show up at our office, also known as door knocking. So have an amazing day. Again, Charles Botenston from BPI. And my email is charles at botenston.com. Uh, we are really, really good at connecting off-market buyers and sellers. Uh, we've done a lot of them. So if you want that, and obviously there's only one agent on the deal, so an owner gets you know a little uh, commission advantage to ensure that the price comes down to where the buyer wants to pay, all right? And we're not gonna undercut it, but we're not gonna, it's gonna go at the market value. That's the best way to put it. So if you're interested, shoot us a call on our e email. Have an amazing day. Talk